Okay, let's go. This is Fundamentals of CTF Strategy for Tribes Ascend. Tribes is not about killing players. With the fast respawn time and the high player speeds, you can really get right back into the action very quickly after a kill. This play here is happening so slow that my Pathfinder can get right back up to speed and is going to be able to stop these guys from getting away with our flag. Since killing a player really just knocks them out of the play for a short time, there's very little difference between being dead and being in the wrong place. This diagram here shows how each team scores in Capture the Flag, and ultimately, this is the only thing that really matters. Every moment of every game, everything that you do should be grounded in a concern from one of these four fundamental elements. I'm going to cover each one of them in this video, and I'd like to begin with what is probably the most misunderstood, the enemy flag stand. It feels like offense when you go to attack the enemy base, and to some extent it is, but notice that the enemy flag stand is actually the one thing your team doesn't need in order to score. But what you can do very effectively from the enemy flag stand is prevent the enemy team from scoring. Every offensive player should consider this their number one duty. Let's look at an example. Here I've decided on a strategic goal of taking direct possession of the enemy flag stand using the heavy juggernaut class. I'm running a really simple route that I drilled a few times in an empty server and these are pre-memorized shots. I'm basically executing a plan to get myself safely into the enemy base that I have practiced so I can at least be reasonably consistent about it. Now that I'm inside the base, I start to look around and the first thing I check is the flag situation. The enemy carrier is moving toward their stand. Even though their flag's not home, this is a real threat that they could score. It's not until he veers off that I feel free to move away from the enemy flag stand. But notice that I'm continually tracking his location. Since he's far away from the stand right now, I have a few moments to maybe shoot at this turret, but in between each shot, I update my knowledge of his location. I start taking down their second turret, but their flag is returned, so I move immediately to the goal of preventing them from scoring. I'm standing here and calling for a light to grab their flag because we do have a few moments here, and notice that I'm staying out of the path of cappers so I don't body block them. When nobody shows up and they're about to score, I move to take the flag directly, get the return, and then drop the enemy flag back where I found it. The Infiltrator is another great class for taking direct control of the enemy flag stand, although he does it through stealth, not power. Again, notice I was standing out of the path of incoming cappers, so I didn't accidentally body block that guy. I didn't know it was coming. Now I could run out there and fight these guys, but I stand here and control the stand. Throwing the flag away, I can still hide and then take out this carrier. Now watch what happens here where I kind of dance around the flag a little bit, actually failing to make the return. That's because I'm not running the reach perk there, uh, but more on that later. Here again as the raider, instead of going after the flag carrier directly, I move to control the stand. Despite my poor aim, my teammate helps me and we get the flag and there's the return but no actually I didn't return it um, I thought I had there again you know if I had the reach perk I probably would have had that return so again I don't chase the guy move to control the stand ah there's my teammate he didn't call out that he was gonna grab the flag so he got body blocked and I keep grabbing the flag preventing them from scoring as much as I can and in the end I'm not successful here but hey if they score over your dead body every single time, at least you're trying to do the right thing. Here I've fallen behind in a chase, so I redirect right at the enemy flag stand. Um, this sort of crash, you know, that you know where he's going, so why not just go there yourself? Now, notice I just kind of fling myself in the direction of the flags there, and I pick up and get the return. That's the power of the reach perk, which I am running on this build. Crashing the stand is probably one of the most fun parts of the game. With a missile on your tail, you come flying in at 100 miles an hour, and then boom! I don't know, I like that. It, crashing the stand is such an important concept that 
I want to show you one more example here of not doing it right. I'm shelling the enemy defense here, and I'm correctly ignoring the player who's shooting at me. He's not really a threat, I've got tons of health. The important thing is their stand. But then, as soon as they grab our flag, I lose my mind and begin taking some ridiculous bad pot shots at this guy over here. It's, it's only a few seconds without realizing it, I fire my final Merv at him. And then I turn to check the flag situation, and I'm already too late. I hurl myself at the stand anyway, and luckily some kind of teammate makes the play instead of me. I guess he's playing better CTF than I am. I pick up an ammo nugget here so I can clear out this damn turret, and uh, my plan here is, well, do whatever I can. So fortunately my teammate keeps making things happen, and I get the return just in time. But you notice how only a few seconds of not paying attention there almost prevented me from stopping them from scoring. You need to get in the habit of being constantly aware of the flag situation so that you can know when one team or the other is just about to score. That's the only way you can get in there and do something about it. You won't see too many blue plate specials in this video, but generally speaking, I'm able to be in position to even try and make the play. Let's look next at the number two priority of offensive players, which is helping your team to take possession of the enemy flag. We'll start with the role of clearing the enemy flag stand. Typically people will think of the juggernaut class for doing this. I throw some Mervs at the stand, knocks their defense aside, and my teammate grabs the flag. But you can really do this with any class, especially any class with a spin fuser. Here I'm using the Pathfinder. You can see that the enemy's defense reacts immediately because they don't want to deal with spin fusers all day long. I just thrust pack somewhere else, move around and do it again. The Brute's another class that can do this, as is the soldier equipped with the Spin Fuser. Here I'm able to single-handedly clear out a pretty well-funded defense. It's got a Hoff, Force Field, but nothing can stand up to infinite Spin Fuser discs. And I didn't coordinate this, but you know it often happens that your team comes in and makes the flag grab. I fire a few more shots at their defense, and then I turn to the flag situation. Soldier's not too fast, but you know, he can get into the fray here reasonably well, which is why he's a pretty decent offensive guy. I happen to run into the enemy uh, flag carrier here. Bad luck for him. Now I want to show one more example of the same thing, but the point here is that you shouldn't get tunnel vision when you're zoomed way in like this. As soon as the flag's in play, you need to get your head up, look around, and see what's going on. In this case, because the enemy has our flag, I switch from a clearing roll and move to take direct possession of the enemy flag stand. I think this kind of long-range spamming strategy is a great way for new players to learn offense. It's easy to execute, it puts the defense in a difficult situation of having to choose between tolerating your spam or leaving their post to come and do something about it, and lastly, as long as you're paying attention to the flag situation, it puts you in an excellent position to practice crashing the enemy stand and preventing them from scoring. I'm not going to cover capping directly in this video, because other players have already done that better than I could hope to. I also think that people generally understand the strategy there. Go look up some quality routes on YouTube, drill them in an empty server, communicate with your team, and go fast. But let's look at a few situations where the enemy flag is in play. Here I've spawned into a situation where my team is about to score, but the enemy successfully crashes our stand. When this happens, you want to avoid a knee-jerk reaction of going after the enemy carrier. I think that the enemy flag is a more valuable pickup here. If you allow them to return, then suddenly they're the team that's about to score, instead of you. Besides, you can usually count on your teammates to understand that they have to go after the enemy carrier. I think escorting may be the hardest part of this game. It requires a combination of combat skills and skiing that's pretty tough to pull off. This isn't a great example, but it gives you the idea. I'm not looking for my own safety here. I'm following the biggest threat to the carrier. I should be really shooting this guy with the assault rifle, but instead I'm preferring the spin fuser there. When your team's flag carrier is killed, 
you have the even tougher task of trying to pick up the flag in the field under the enemy's watchful eye. But it's pretty exciting when you manage to pull that off. Now I do want to give one small tip to cappers, which is that when you're bringing the flag back home to score, if your Hoff doesn't get out of the way, just hit Z, pass him the flag, and win the game, instead of getting all angry about it. Okay, so, we've covered the enemy assets, but now let's move on to the friendly ones. Like with the enemy stuff, I, I think that people mostly understand the flag play, so I want to begin by talking about what it means to defend the friendly stand. It's pretty clear that you need to defend your flag stand when the flag is home and prevent the enemy from grabbing. The Hoff is a great choice for doing that. But it's also important that you understand that sometimes you need to defend the stand even when the flag is not home. In this example here, my team is currently in a standoff, but suddenly our flag is returned. It's time to score, but nobody's covering the stand. So an enemy flag carrier comes in and easily gets away with our flag again, and we're suddenly back in a standoff. Now it might seem like I have two choices here. I could either chase the flag carrier, or I could defend our teams. But I'm actually going to go for a third option here, which is to defend our team's empty flag stand. I go into super high alert mode here, twitching back and forth and watching the flag situation, because it could all change in the blink of an eye, and I could need to thrust pack into a nitron jump toward the enemy flag stand. But we managed to get the return, so now I'm on defense and I call it out. Now watch as I push the wrong button here and screw it all up. Trying to call incoming hostile, I hit weapon switch instead. And as a result, my spin fuser disc is a fraction of a second late. Fortunately, there's a teammate handy to finish him off, and so I move immediately to cover the stand again. And we score. Now watch what happens next. We get an easy grab while the enemy team seems to be kind of overcommitted on offense here. I think what happened is that nobody on their team actually defended their empty stand while we were trying to score. So we got the re-grab just like you saw earlier happen to our team. This sort of chain capping can happen easily when a team neglects defense of their empty stand. I think another great role for every player to learn is what Tribes Vets call stay-at-home defense, or just home D. This is a player, perhaps in soldier gear, but really anything can do, who defends the flag while it's home on the stand, but if the flag gets out, does not chase, but instead stays home, making sure that the team has a stable foundation by keeping their flag stand under control. For our last topic, Let's cover defense of the friendly flag by chasing as a pathfinder. Generally you'll want to hang around the flag area and then whenever the flag gets out, you just chase. Yeah, well, it's pretty straightforward, I guess. But there are a few subtleties. First of all, the only reason I returned that flag instantly is because I'm working with a hop. Generally speaking, you're worried about this kind of a re-grab here, especially when there isn't a Hoff. I'm kind of lucky that that guy was so low on health there, but I'm managing to keep control of the situation. This heavy gets it, so I'm not even going to try and kill him. The Nitron grenade is the right thing to use against him. I could consider suiciding to get back into position, but in this case I figure that since some people are incoming, I'll just ski back because they might grab it again and I don't want to be out of position for the extra couple of seconds to get full health and ammo by suiciding. Here the primary duty, you just want to, when you see a capper coming in, put a disc on the flag. And there you go. Now your nitron grenades are a big help when you're chasing. The reach perk and the thrust pack also give you a lot of flexibility. See if you can get this one down where you just kind of throw the nitron in and you're in front of the guy's momentum. So you instantly return it. Now, the nitron grenades actually have a second use which is just as important, if, if not more important. It looks like this guy got a pretty good kill and he's getting away, but... By coming out of spawn with the thrust pack into double nitron here, I can really get up to speed fast 
and see how I'm kind of shooting ahead of him. So I'm moving here to intercept, which is a key ability. You gotta get used to the timing of getting across the map with these nitrons and then landing, boom, right in his face like that. It's actually not as hard as it looks. Now, I do want to cover one last point here about the defense of the flag, which is, I, I already kind of hinted at it, don't return the flag without thinking about it first, right? So here I'm calling that our flag is secure, I'm disking it around a little bit, I'm a little awkward, but I'm trying to get it against that wall there so that it's not so easy to pick up at high speed. It, this really throws off people who are running a memorized route and aren't very flexible. Also, it really cuts down on the angles that they can come in at. So I'm watching it, watching it, and there we go. Look at that feeble pickup, right? Piece of cake to defend that thing. So I'm bouncing it around a little bit more. And, uh, you know, this guy, he does get away with a llama grab, but, you know, he's, he's not going very far there. So that's a pretty important thing that you should keep in mind. All right, I, I think we've covered all four of these now. And uh, that should just about do it. I, I hope this video was pretty helpful. And... Uh, if it's impacted your play or you have some feedback, uh, you know, leave some comments, give me a shout, let me know. Um, I'm not really planning to make a second video, but uh, maybe if this one makes a difference, I, I, I might think about it. Uh, what's that? I, I forgot what now? The, the generators. Uh, all right. Here's a quick word on the generator. No.